Nigeria, thank you for joining us this Saturday morning in July, following the rising clamor by state governors for citizens to bear arms for self-defense in the face of worsening insecurity. The chairman of relevant committees at the House of Representatives kicked against the move, saying that the level of arms proliferation in the country was already worrisome. They said that the states should instead push for state police. Of course, a lot of governors applauded that. But um, first of all, what do we need to be able to have state policing? We've been talking about community policing for some time. That is going on in some states. But people still feel insecure, and it still looks like terrorists, bandits are just running roughshod over us in this country. So the issue of security is not going to go away soon. Let's look at this issue of small arms with our panel this morning. Uh, we have joining us via Zoom from Ibado, Mr. Fatai Owosheni, Special Advisor to the Oyo State Governor on Security Matters. Good morning, Mr. Owosheni. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. We have also joining us a security consultant who is in our studio in Abuja, Mr. Mike Ejiofo. Good morning. Good morning. Well, both of you come from uh, the <coughs> forces in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we still expect another security consultant to join us in the course of the show. But let's go on with what we have presently. Uh, Mr. Washeni, you used to be in the police force. What are your thoughts about citizens not carrying arms in the face of what we're facing right now, in the insecurity seeming to get from bad to worse? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me first... Um... There are different types of firearms. And sometimes when people discuss this, um, they don't categorize. There is what they call the prohibited firearms, and there are the ones they call the non-prohibited firearms. For the ones that are non-prohibited, licenses are issued for them. And um, one of those, the common ones, or the commonest um, among those non-prohibited ones are the double barrel um, gun. Um, and of course, the day guns that hunters use. While the prohibited firearms are the ones that can fire rapid, um, licenses are not issued for those ones, um, except um, where the president um, or the head of state um, consider it necessary to give um, a person, and those are pistols. And in most cases, those ones are probably approved for um, mostly retired um, security personnel. So citizens carry arms. Um, my thoughts, um, I won't support that, because in the country where, for example, the United States of America, where um, such is allowed, we've also had people saying that, oh, we need to reduce this and all, all those things. So um, when all of us um, start carrying firearms, uh, we are probably, um, you know, um, increasing the stock of uh, armory for criminals because even the security forces that are carrying them, uh, day by day we hear reports that they are attacked and those weapons are, are taken. So for me, it's a no, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Jeffo, what are your thoughts? Well, it's, uh, it's disturbing and very, very alarming uh, the amount of arms uh, within the society. Like uh, Mr. Wosheni said, you have uh, prohibited and non-prohibited firearms. For the small arms and light weapons, uh, in Nigeria, for instance, you have over 6 million in circulation. Contrasting it with uh, the 
the regular forces whose uh, arms are less than 600,000 from statistics. So it's uh, very worrisome. But coming to the point of um, whether we should bear arms, you see, I have uh, always advocated that, uh, just like I advocate for the state police, I also advocate uh, for issuing of firearms to private citizens. Uh, because the situation has gotten to the point that we need to protect ourselves. If you look at uh, if the, the bandits, the criminals, the kidnappers, if they are aware that you have arms in your house, they won't have that uh, impunity you. to be invading your houses or kidnapping people on exactly. the road. Exactly. But I agree that there <clears> must <throat> be abuse if, uh, if people are allowed to carry arms. Uh, so we need to, uh, government need to regulate it kind of, you know, looking at the kind of people. Of course, issuing of uh, non prohibited firearms like license your mental stability must be established, your physical condition, temperament, and all this must be put uh, into consideration. So if you must uh, uh, issue arms to certain categories of people, it should be encouraged. Mm. I, I think it will help us you know, reduce the number of policemen in the, uh, doing their guard duties, you know, because it's one of the challenges we're having in terms of uh, security control in the country. A situation where you have less than 400,000 policemen and there are over 120 of the, uh, thousand of them are deployed to dignitaries. Mm. It, it's a challenge for us. And uh, more we also need to get more arms for the security forces, mm. especially the police that is statutorily charged with maintenance of internal security. Yeah, but Mr. Hosheni, um, if you say that uh, issuing licenses in general for Nigerians to carry arms, it's a definite no-no. Um, won't this give the criminals and whoever the impetus to just attack Nigerians at will because they know that Nigerians are not armed? The, the, the um, freedom for every individual to carry firearms would definitely not stop the issue of insecurity. We must go to the root of insecurity. And um, what I mean by going to the root is that there are causes for this. Um, governance, for example, um, and of course, people getting agitated over, oh, we have been marginalized and all those. We must first look at the issue of unemployment. Where you make provisions um, for people who um, uh, um, graduates, non-graduates, um, to get work. Go to the chapter two of the Nigerian constitution. The government has obligation. And the, one of the obligations um, is that um, everyone should uh, be gainfully employed. And when they are gainfully employed, they must also be given wages that can sustain them. So when you start with that, you Oh dear. Oh dear. What? Mr. Jeffo? Um, yeah. Can I go ahead? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can hear you now. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, when you go to the root causes of um, um, crimes and. Oh, that um, challenges. The challenges we have with insecurity we definitely reduce. There are countries where um, they'll tell you that they have probably 98%, um, up to 99% of uh, employment rates. Singapore is one of them. They don't carry, the citizens don't carry weapons going all about. So address the root causes and uh, all these things um, will get reduced. Um, citizens' uh, awareness and consciousness with regards to insecurity. There have been cases where people that um, have these firearms um, illegally kept in their houses. It's the weapons that the criminals use in attacking them. So um, possession of firearms by every individual is not going to solve the problem of um, insecurity or crimes and criminalities. 
Mr. Mr. Jaffo, let me ask you this. One of the things that bef would befuddle anyone at any given point on such a matter is, what are these arms? It would seem like for now, we are talking generally about you know, um, guns and all of that. If the law does not permit Nigerians to carry arms, does that mean that Nigerians do not, are not also permitted by law to defend themselves? Perhaps they, they need to, we need to clear that part first. Of course, uh, the primary purpose of uh, government is welfare and security of the people. It's a social contract between government and the people that government must protect the people. But uh, a situation where we find ourselves now that uh, government or security forces can virtually not protect you. Well, only two days ago, uh, some, kidnapped, some people were taken in Casino and they're asking for 250 million. How long shall we continue like this? They are agreed they will be abused. But from the statistics I give to you, who are the people using this arm? If you have over 6 million in unauthorized hand in Nigeria, I'm not talking of the West African sub-region now. I'm talking of Nigeria based on statistics. So who are the people using it? Of course, you see majority of them in the uh, hands of our politicians. And it, the case is going to get worse as we go into uh, uh, campaigns now. They are going to deploy all these people. For the, the question that I'm asking... We should look for ways of... Uh, of yeah. uh, protecting ourselves. Well, which is the point that I'm trying to make. Just to be clear, when, you know, you both, Mr. Oshini and your humble self say, we cannot carry arms, what kind of arms are we not supposed to carry? Because it will be difficult for anyone, including your, your humble self, to just stand by if you do not have license to carry any arms at all, and watch and anyone invade your privacy without you being able to defend yourself or protect yourself at all. Knowing, of course, what we know now. Even if the government was able to do all he was, he, he's able to do, if that, that all they're, they're able to do, there comes some measure, there comes a time when at least in a little way, you are able to defend yourself. So in terms of those arms, that we are not supposed to carry. What arms are we talking about here that people are not supposed to carry? Now, we should get this thing clear. Let's make a distinction. The arms issued to individuals or citizens are not for protection, they're for gaming. And uh, that, that's the law. But I can tell you that if I have my gun for gaming and I'm attacked in my house, I will not have any other option than to defend myself. The guns you need license for, and the, which the, uh, the law does not allow you, except the security forces, are the prohibited firearms. Mm -hmm. But for the non-prohibited firearms, like uh, the double barrel, the gun, they are for gaming. They are not for protection. Mm -hmm. So that is why I was always, uh, I always uh, advocate too that. Uh, Government should look for a way of liberalizing the carrying of firearms. You know, I agree to be abused. Just like we have the argument of um, the state police. Can we say because they will be abused, then they won't allow it? I'm happy the, the northern governors are keen to this project of state police because there is no way you can solve uh, security challenges in your area when you don't know the environment. Mm. Security challenges are local, and we need local solutions. I continue to emphasize and give an example with uh, the issue of uh, Amutekun in uh, Ondo State, for instance. And luckily, um, uh, the essay to the governor in Oyo State, I also know that they have their own security outfit. I've known the intelligence they have gathered within that area, and uh, they, they are able to do all this because it's their em environment. They know their environment. So we need to also look for ways of uh, liberalizing these arms, examine properly, vet the people we are going to give the arms mm. to protect themselves. Okay. The people who are not authorized to carry arms are carrying them with impunity, with reckless abandon, threatening peace of the people and their society. So how long shall we continue like this? Okay. I can say again that it's going to get worse 
I'm not a pessimist, but <laughs> I know that we're lifting all the bar. And I can tell you that these uh, campaigns, we're mm. going to witness some violence. Since mm. the politicians know that they cannot uh, manipulate figures anymore. Okay. Well, I understand that Captain Umar Ali, security consultant, has just joined us. Um, he's also joined us virtually. Thank you this morning, Captain. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Well, we're talking about this, uh, you know, small arms proliferation and all of that. And it seems like, you know, you, of course, know about that and have, uh, you know, a thing or two to say about that. Uh, we began by asking the question, what your own take would be on it? The two gentlemen also on the panel have uh, added a word or two. What's your take on whether or not uh, people should bear arms to defend themselves in the light of our realities? The dynamics of what informs arms proliferation in Nigeria is worrisome. And I say worrisome because in every crime scenario, there have to be three things that are key before the, the crime occurs. There has to be a criminal, a willing criminal. There has to be a victim, potential victim. And there has to be the right time or place, if you like. And all of these things key in where the Nigerian citizen is victim. Huh. We have willing criminals, oh yes we do. We have victims who are at their mercy, yes we do. And the timing and the place is just conducive because our laws gag the citizen and release the criminal. We see a situation where criminals don't even carry what my senior colleague has said, automatic weapons. They carry anti-aircraft weapons. They have gone from automatic huh. to anti-aircraft. And other than anti-aircraft weapons, they even have blowpipes, and you mention it. And yet, the citizen is what we are worrying about because we feel some people are temperamental, some people are psychotic. And all those things that are actually cogent but beg the situation at hand. I say they beg the situation at hand because if our law enforcement and our government cannot go after psychos who actually turn anti-aircraft guns, not even automatic guns now, they turn anti-aircraft guns <laughs> on civilians, women, children, and what have you. But they worry about people who want to graduate from what we call shakabula, that is pump action, and then guns to the 7.62 mm special AK-47 automatic, for example. Then it's, it's worrisome. We talk about governors, for example, who are paid to protect their people. And they've cried out and said, listen, we need to upgrade. Then we see one side being upgraded to cater for people from a particular place. But then the same people from another part of the country, theirs too, cannot be upgraded to cater for their own people. So it's, it's worrisome. Okay. It's, it's mind-boggling, hmm. honestly, very. Yeah, well, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Oshini. Thankfully, uh, you've been in the police force. You've operated as a state commissioner of police in at least two states. Right now, you advise the governor of another state altogether in, on security matters. What have been your own experiences, you know, having, should I say, crossed the line to civilian life and experienced what people experience, you know, uh, in, about policing? The challenge is obvious. You have had to intervene in matters where it will seem it could get worse if you and your men or, you know, the apparatus of state did not intervene. But here we are. Now, if you say, as you have said, that we shouldn't, it shouldn't be liberalized for everyone to carry arms, what have been your experience uh, in terms of people defending themselves or government defending or protecting the people? Um, 
from the work I've done today, um, my own solution will still remain that um, we should, um, you know, close all the gap um, in our governance. That is, um, once you have um, a proper governance, um, I can bet you that of the challenges we're talking, um, we, we, we can overcome them. Um, there are a lot of things that government has left undone, and that is why the citizens have been, um, you know, have been made to be look like helpless. Mm. Even the security institutions that we have, um, how much weapon do they have at all? If government, I mean, when I say government, um, the government that controls the security institutions, if they live up to their responsibility and they know um, our security operatives require um, some of these weapons, since we cannot liberalize the carrying of weapons um, for citizens, if they live up to their responsibility, um, I, I think we would overcome this. If you go to some police stations, um, you find out how many guns do they have there. Um, and it's not just only police. So where government is able to recognize the fact that we need uh, security, we need to fund our security agencies who overcome this problem. Um, so to, the, the, that's my own position. Mm -hmm. And with regards to um, citizens' experience, uh, the people that have been victims, um, yes, it's, um, it's very, very worrisome. Um, but we also need to get, uh, you know, to raise the consciousness of our people, especially where you have um, the crimes that we call opportunistic um, crimes. Um, sometimes um, there are things that we need to do um, that, that um, we left undone. So um, when you put all this together, and my point is also that even where guns are liberalized, what is the statistics that uh, these are the ever reduced crimes? The, with the liberalization um, weapon, uh, uh, possession of weapon, it hasn't stopped crimes. It's just that um, in our own case, um, when we say it, we don't you know, look at all those other places. Day by day, they also have their challenges. So, uh, and that is why I still maintain um, that position that um, liberalization of firearms will not solve the problem of insecurity in this country. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jaffo, you said that there are about six million pieces all over the place in the country. Um, it's not often that we hear that if these guys who are carrying these arms are caught, that they're actually charged with illegal possession of arms. Why is that the case? I'm sure if we hear, heard more about that happening, people may not be in such a hurry to go and illegally acquire small arms. Um, that's, what the loss, that's what the loss is. If you are in position of uh, arms that are not licensed or prohibited firearms, you are charged for illegal possession of firearms. That's the law. Uh, but like you, like I, I rightly said and you emphasized, the number of firearms in unauthorized hands in Nigeria are 10 times higher than what all our security forces put together have. So is, it, does it not worry? So if you liberalize, that's the point I'm making. If you liberalize and the people using these arms know that everybody can carry arms, it's not going to definitely reduce crime per se, but uh, everybody will be conscious that everybody, every yeah. citizen is armed. So you take time when you want to attack people. That's the point I'm making. Mm. Even if you, like uh, Mr. Wojcian is uh, arguing, even if you employ everybody that is employable, there will still be crime in the country. There will still be violent crime. Even in America where you have it in Switzerland, there are still crimes. So the issue is uh, that uh, we are not very well equipped in terms of security forces to take us. We need to complement the efforts by helping them 
and then you liberalize arms, and then people will go about with their arms. The impunity of which this will go out will, be, will reduce at least. It's not that it's going to go out. I agree that our business, but I've set up standards for issuing of uh, those uh, arms for, for protection. Um, Captain, in the course of the week, uh, we heard the governor of Ondo State come out, you know, and openly say that what was good for the goose was good enough, was also good for the gander with reference to um, uh, this uh, militia in um, Katsina carrying arms and other states not being allowed to arm their own uh, little militia forces. And he was saying that he was just going to go ahead and do what was allowed one person you know, should be allowed uh, the other person as well. So he was going to go ahead and arm his own militia, the Amotekun. What are your thoughts about that decision of his? Well, for, uh, you see, <laughs> I don't know whether government has issued a statement on that. I read it in the newspaper. That government has given uh, so, Sorry, for, Mr. Jeffo, ju just a second. Kassina, just a second, Mr. Jeffo. Yeah. That, that question is actually yes. for Captain Aliu, if he's there. Captain. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, I feel for the uh, His Excellency, the Governor of Ondo State, he has his flock to cater for. And as a shepherd, you definitely will not find it funny if a co-shepherd like you has what it takes and has been given the go-ahead to carry the kind of weapons that will combat a similar threat kind in another region. And yours is not being allowed to do the same. There is no balance in that. If there is anywhere where people have to be defended at all costs. It is in those state. Let's not forget those poor children, those women who were massacred in that church. If anyone should get the right of preference on any waivers, on any leverages, on any, I don't know, I don't know what incentives, if we had to turn our face and say, okay, despite the law, let some people enjoy this unusual, you know, permission, I think Ondo should be top of that list because those guys saw hell a few months ago. I'm not from Ondo State, but I'm human, and I have colleagues who are from Ondo State. I want to add to what our senior retired military police officer said. There is much our law enforcement agencies can do if only they too are upgraded. Yes, if they are optimally tasked and properly deployed and armed, they will do much for us. But then, for 200 million people, how many policemen do you think you have per one person? There's not enough policemen. And I'm telling you, I don't think the policemen have the arsenal. These jokers, we call bandits, these jokers, we call terrorists, and whatever their names are. are. Why? So why is it that when it comes to giving those who should have the legitimacy of state, the go ahead to do what they have to do, we develop cold feet. Mm. When it comes to saying, okay, let the citizens fend for themselves, we develop cold feet. But then, those that are non-state actors, those that are even people who have no respect for the state, are having a field day and doing as they so please. They've moved beyond uh, double-barrel guns, they've moved beyond automatic weapons, they've gone to anti-aircraft weapons, they've even graduated to Bombs, bombs that can blow bridges apart. If you know what a bridge is and the and the and the and the and the, the charge that is required for a bomb to take that mass of concrete down, you understand what I'm saying? So it becomes worrisome. Mm. Uh, His Excellency, uh, 
Kerebolu uh, has a very cogent case. He has a very cogent case. And if he is not giving what he wants, then you are pushing him to the, uh, to the extreme end of desperation, where he just becomes as desperate as the threat. And uh, if we don't want that to happen, you know, my Yoruba brother will say, tell you, oh, we're laughing, we're worried. You know, that is what we also call mutually assured destruction. When you arm up and that person knows that you have just as much capability to destroy him as he does you, mm -hmm. then you see what you call a balance of peace. Okay. Well, Mr. Wojini, I don't know if you would like to react to that question as well. Very quickly. Uh, yes. Um, I'm not too sure. And um, I won't imagine that any non-state actors in any part of this country um, had been authorized to carry happens. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. But I must also quickly mention something. Um, my brother, Captain Umar, mentioned it, and uh, Mr. Jeff also mentioned it. Um, yes, we've always been talking of the number of policemen to citizens. Um, somehow, I used to think that um, it is not even about the number. It is about the tools that you perform. Um, when it comes to um, enforcement and police in this country, people always talk of only the police. It is because that the security agencies are not working together. If you had everyone that carries out the work of law enforcement, that is the police, the civil defense, the DSS, the military that are deployed for internal security operations, um, the immigration, all other, all those units. The figure, if you aggregate the figure, you won't actually say that Nigeria is on the police um, somehow. It is for the government um, that controls these institutions to live up to their responsibilities and provide for them. If we talk of proliferation of firearms, that is to say that as the criminals upgrade using RPG, using dynamite, um, the citizens will also be upgraded in terms of uh, upgrade the tools, upgrade the um, arsenals of the security agencies and let them work together. When you do that, um, we can solve most of the problems we have they are still not working together that um I, I would say but i would not just envisage that um the federal government in any way would allow any non actors um to carry um ak-47 in any part of this country but if that is done then um all the other states like in my state where we have the amotekun they should also be allowed to carry, if that has been done in any state. Mm. Well, Mr. Ojeni, I'll stay with you uh, on this mail that we received from Peter Keboku. He makes three points. One, the government should deliberately remove arms from the criminals. Otherwise, citizens will scout to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Secondly, adults should be licensed to carry arms for self and community defense maturely. Three, how do you fight those criminals pursuing you with AK-47 where you're not allowed to carry pump action? Then he now makes this point. The only genuine way to stop proliferation of arms illegally is to deliberately remove arms from the criminals. What are your thoughts on this, especially in the area of mopping of the these small arms from, from the public? There is uh, an agency, I think, um, still working under the umbrella of the office of the NSA now, that is charged with, um, you know, um, removing all these uh, sm um, small arms and light weapons um, to check proliferation. I would support that. Government should stand up to its responsibility. Government should also stand up to its responsibility with um, regards to those people, one way or the other, have been you know, given certain responsibilities like um, guard uh, pipelines and all those things. Um, if I would say that some of these uh, outfits, they, they, in, they, under the guise that they have been given such responsibilities, brought this, brought in this weapon. 
um, electioneering is uh, just by the door. Some of our leaders also had courage. So they must live to their responsibility, you know, squarely face the issue of, um, you know, checking this proliferation. The government is lacking in that. And uh, when I mean the government, all of us know, because um, we, we know the, harm, the, the part of government that is responsible for controlling all the security institutions and have the responsibility to deploy whatever it's going to take to check proliferation and to hub the kind of weapons, the tools that are available um, to fight crimes by our security institutions. Mr. Jofo, um, I remember, you know, I think it was it last year, the vice president was saying, look, we can really deal with this insecurity thing. Um, we may not necessarily need to add more men. Let's just deploy technology. I believe, Mr. Jofo, you know that we have quite a number of highly innovative technology all over the world that can be easily deployed. One of the ways in which Lagos, for instance, is making effort to defend itself is, you know, the use of um, cameras all over CCTVs. the place, closed circuit TVs all over the city, you know, as many as can be. And of course, it will seem like more and more are being deployed. We understand that there's a city in China that it's like you have three cameras to one person in that particular <laughs> city. So in terms of deploying technology, there are two challenges. I'd like you to speak to how, if we can, you know, deploy them. One is the technology itself and its adaptability to our environments, various environments and topography all over the nation. And two is the skill gap that needs to be filled. Yeah, there are many, uh, many challenges. In, uh, in any civilized society, yes, uh, deployment of te technology is uh, encouraged. But uh, if you deploy technology, it's not going to help you to know the number of arms in the, in the society. What we will do, do is that it will aid you in investigations or prevention of uh, crimes. Uh, so, like, uh, I also want to comment on what, uh, before I come back to that, on what Mr. Wilson said. Police will continue to be called because police is the statutory body charged with maintenance of internal security. When the United, Station, uh, United Nations was releasing his, uh, his statistics, he said uh, one policeman to 400 citizens. What's our ratio? We have less than 400,000 policemen. We have about 200 million. So how do you equate this? The point we are trying to make now is that, you know, if we must check the imbalance, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be very difficult to mop up all the arms in the society. So in the interim, we can adopt, in addition to technology, which will help us in investigation and prevention of crimes, we can adopt this issue of, because I don't want to, I just want to comment on what you earlier said about uh, the arming of uh, the vigilante in uh, Casina State or the outfit in Casina State. I don't believe that story. And I'm surprised that government has not issued a statement to confirm or refute that uh, allegation. Because I look at it as an allegation. This is one of the best ways I think the government, the federal government, should even. Uh, the help check crime, allow all these well former established uh, outfits, security outfits like Amotekumu and uh, virtually all states have their own vigilante and security outfit. Allow them to carry these prohibited firearms. They will be more effective because they are close on the, uh, to, to the ground than the immediate uh, the, the police itself. If you go to some stations, like he admitted, you have one or two guns, and possibly one person. They are in the southeast, for instance. You see people, you see these bandits overrunning police station because they, they don't have the manpower, they don't have the, the, the request, and the little one they have, they take away. So we need to arm these well-established and organized security outfits in addition to considering if we don't want to give arms to, uh, to private uh, individual citizens well-established, vetted uh, <coughs> private security practitioners can also be allowed, like 
people guarding the banks and all these things. Because most of them, at, at least, I'm sure, there, there's none of these uh, private practitioners that is established without involvement of any of the retired uh, uh, personnel of the armed forces or the police. So it's a way of uh, also trying to help maintain internal security. That's, I think that's my position. Yeah, um, Captain, if technology were deployed, as my partner just said, and it is known to the generality of Nigerians that several crimes have been solved using technology, don't you think this will help deter crime as well? Captain, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, yes. Yes, of course. There is no bigger difference to crime like that one big eye in the sky. You know, when you have it in your subconscious that 24-7, something, someone, somewhere is looking at you, okay? We see it when we travel out of this country. The moment you land at certain airports, something about you changes. You don't do things the way you would have done them at home. The reason is because there is this subconscious that runs across all the nooks and crannies of our country today that I can do what I like, nothing will happen because no one is watching. But if we had that subconscious realization through the use of technology, that someone is watching and it doesn't matter when you do it, you could be seen to have done it next tomorrow, they're still going to come after you. I mean, let me give you a mild example of that. And it happened some hours or some nights ago when a policewoman was beaten black and blue. You saw what that device in people's hands did and it went viral. That's the advantage of technology for fighting crime. And the reason why anybody will do that to our police officer is because, because of logistics and equipment problems or challenges, the police has lost its majesty, mm. its reckoning amongst people. That's why they maltreat our officers that way. Will you beat a kidnapper like that? Will you try it? Will you try a bandit like that? Will you try it? So we've come to that stage. <clears throat> where we either deploy these things as in technology and begin to put the fear of crime, not even God, the fear of crime now in people, or else we'll continue to run circles around these problems, which are actually not supposed to be problems. Mr. Oshini, you want to speak to that as well, the deployment of technology. I'm actually concerned about not just the deployment of it, but the, but the skills or the skill gap that needs to be filled in terms of deployment of technology. Uh, as I mean, you may also want to speak to or respond to Mr. Geoffrey's comment that look, at the end of the day, the police comes first. I, I agree with you. Um, it is easy to say the police comes first. The police uh, has the primacy in internal security. But the government and the people that say that and uh, other colleagues in uniform, do we allow that? Yes, we can say that police um, somehow, um, because of one thing or the other, um, lost that primacy because the police has been deliberately what they're supposed to um, be given to them. We, we say it oftentimes, but on the ground, it is not um, the actual thing. With regards to technology, it's not just about deploying that. The skill, like you mentioned, you must have trained people to handle this. And of course, you cannot fault, um, you know, the the, the 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 advantage of technology in, um, at, at, at all when it comes to um, solving crime problems. We've talked of um, our subconscious, the subconsciousness. When you enter a certain country, you won't do certain things because you think you are being watched 24 hours. And the same thing, if we are able to um, really you know, invest seriously in that, 
Um, and of course, that points to the fact that I'm talking about uh, proliferation of weapons. Uh, globally, crimes, are, uh, insecurity, except terrorism, um, they, they're not fought with uh, people carrying weapons. In some of the countries we go, how many policemen um, do you see on the road carrying weapons? In some countries, we even think they don't have policemen because of technology. So anybody that wants to do anything, think it's being watched, including um, this traffic and issues. In Lagos now, quite a number of people will tell you that around the Kedja, hey, be careful. Don't do certain things because the camera. We must invest. The government, the, the government that controls and has a responsibility, the primary responsibility to fund um, our security agencies um, have not done enough. Once you are able to deploy technology and you motivate them, uh, the, the personnel very well, you can, you know, the problem will be solved 70%. Um, it may not be 100% because you can't um, have zero, um, zero figure of crime. Nowhere. It is not possible. There must be some small, small things like that. So if government is ready, um, I would say as of now, um, I, it may sound extreme. I don't think we are ready. I will even say that we have not made up our mind that we want a police in this country. Um, you can throw all ever passion on the police. The police in this country has been grossly neglected. We, every time, yes, everybody talk of salary, salary. What is even the element of salary? What are we, That is not enough to motivate anyone. That is not enough for an average policeman to say that, yes, I want to die solving this crime, when he knows that if he dies. Policemen die every day. It's their colleagues that contribute money to, to go and bury their body. Nobody comes um, to come and in so many years. They are pay pittance and all those things. The government is not ready. Nigeria is not ready to have a police. Um, and by extension, the security, other security institutions, look at all the jailbreaks. How many, what is the strength of the correctional the personnel that we have? What technology has been deployed in all these correctional facilities? Government must live up to their responsibility. And I'll continue to clarify, um, if you look at what it you will find out that uh, the government, the, that time of government that has the primary responsibility um, is lacking. Um, how do you explain that uh, the, the government will say they are buying uh, how many vehicles for police with police trust fund? The number of vehicles that only Lagos State will buy. And government will come out and celebrate that. We buy the vehicles, no one is going to follow them. This is a country where we have no address. We don't have address in this country. If you want to pursue a criminal, the motorable roads are not there. In all those countries we're talking about, there are maps that will lead you to places. Here, if they make a distress call to get there is a problem. These are issues that should be resolved. Governments should live up to the provisions and the obligations in Chapter 2 of the Constitution. Uh, um, um, uh, once you do that, we'll find out that we would be able to solve our problem both ways, not just the security institutions alone. That's my view. OK. Uh, Mr. Jeff, we must start winding down now and recall that we're talking about curbing uh, small arms proliferation. So you have told us that there are about 6 million illegal arms in the hands of Nigerians. How do you suggest that we begin to mop up these arms? Yeah, um, before, I ask, uh, before I answer that question, you know, on this issue of uh, deployment of technology, you recall that over $450 million or thereabout was deployed uh, for cameras in Abuja. Where are they now? Are they working? Go to the Kujie Correctional Facility, the last day break. There were no cameras there. So you don't put something on nothing. These things must be, must be budgeted for. Are they budgeted for? On the police, we, the present government told us they will be recruiting 10,000 policemen every year. Has that been done? And people are retiring. People are being killed. There's a, a, a problem between uh, 
the police management and the police service commission in terms of cricket, that has stalled this uh, process. So coming to mopping up of arms, several uh, agencies, committees have been set up to mop up the arms in the society. What are they doing? You just go to Niger Delta or go to one place, they surrender the, uh, the, the old arms they are using and keep the, uh, the this one. and they are pressed. They go and display to the press, they've recovered arms and all this. Thing. And people who are not authorized to carry arms are carrying, are carrying arms everywhere. So we need to do not only setting up these committees, presidential committees on arms and light weapons, we also need to look at our borders to control them. Let more not come in. Before we now start talking of uh, mopping up the ones inside, the, the challenges are too many. Captain? Quickly, uh, indeed, in closing, indeed. mopping up. My closing, my closing remarks for the, the issue of arms proliferation is that the, where we are at this moment, it calls for a lot of introspection. We have to look inward. We have to tell ourselves some truths, particularly as it uh, affects our citizens, and our law enforcement agencies, because whether we like it or not, it's up to them, the law enforcement agencies, to protect the citizens. And if government really wants to make a headway of this, we must ensure that those who keep the law are actually able, willing, and ready to do it. There must be what they require to deliver results. They can't give what they do not have. And if they don't do that, then the citizens will start resorting to self-help. Self-help, OK. Thank you very so much, sure. Captain Umar Aliyu, a security consultant who joined us via Zoom from Ibadan. We also had another security consultant, Mr. Mike Ejiofo, who joined us from our studio in Abuja. And we had the special advisor to the Oyo State Governor on Security Matters, uh, Mr. Fatayo Wushini, who joined us from Ibadan as well. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming to examine this very um, important uh, issue with us this morning. And thank you for staying with us, Sunrise. We'll be back in just a moment with another interesting conversation. Take a sip of your cocoa. We'll be back.